Um, so as Joe mentioned, I was born in Canada. I was born in a really flat part of Canada. I was born in the prairies. Um, but about an hour away, there was also the mountains. So my poetry is really informed by that landscape that I grew up with. Um, and it just, even though now I live in Scotland, I feel like I'm writing about that Canadian landscape more than ever. Um, so I thought, because a lot of that landscape informs my book, I would start with um, one about those prairies that I grew up in. There's a cat in this poem, but it's a very different cat poem, I think. <laughs> Night's Flatline. There were some tones of night I could not bear, that I could not gather in my arms to hold on to. Small town nights, cigarette nights, plumage swelling and drifting into a concave sky. Nights where I harnessed myself to the canola fields, alfalfa leaves, elk sightings, unelegiacally with no magnitude of loss, no understanding of letting go. That was 14 years ago and now the echo is half dream made of skimmed milk and cane sugar stars. The other half, radio static, the white noise of prairies, 20 minutes outside of the city where for miles all you will ever see is that one spotted calf walking into the sunset. Smaller nights, smaller even than the needle of a broken compass flickering back and forth and hovering briefly as if to say, you have reached your destination, or perhaps, you are not lost, then pointed toward the glimpse of spruce trees holding close all of the stray cats underneath as each stammer of lightning flinched across. Those are the nights that dial, that leave a message and hang up, hang you up under the moon, into a storm, into solitude. Some of the other places that are in this collection are, um, other than Canada or Alberta specifically, um, are Scotland. Um, this poem kind of starts um, at a lagoon, at a, at a, at a pond basically, um, in Edinburgh, but then moves towards Dar es Salaam, which is where um, my parents were born um, before they immigrated to Canada. Um, and I visited Dar es Salaam with my father. Um, and so now, sort of that landscape or that experience is eking into my poetry as well. And so this kind of traverses all of those different areas. This is called Meditation While Plaiting My Hair. I part my hair straight down the middle, a river on either side. In the past, someone shaped like me poured water from a metal carafe straight into my mouth, the echo of my river submerged in your river. Lately, I read about storms all night because there is no lightning here. Instead, I see the wind pull down the tautness of trees and the swans at the lagoon part through the wreckage. Each one is another translation for love if love was more vessel than loose thread. Once, pools, we sat poolside outdoors in Dar es Salaam and I chose survival over your body. Why is it I only ever hear the night heron alone? I braid neatly together my hair soaked by salt and the moss of a body I do not touch, the spine of a book left open on the page I forgot to bookmark, the spine of a book I left out in a storm, each of its rooms sliding into our margins into all these tendrils of blank space. Tell me, when did I let us splinter? I think this next poem kind of pairs well with the last poem, um, and this will be my last poem for this evening. Um, and it starts with an epigraph, so um, a, a quotation by Edward Glissant, which is, what kind of river then has no middle? Midnight vessel across the great sea. Another bloom after the first bloom. Inheritance is a form of second sight. In the past, someone with my birthmarks predicted the next moon, the upheaval, my own ebb. My body is the echo of her ions, a tradition that sieves right through my ancestor's thread. I am slick with rose water and cat's eye. I can't choose between survival or pleasure. 
In the past, someone who looked like me fell into the valley of roses five times a day. This echo is another velvet petal submerged in the drool of my mouth. I am submerged in the drool of her mouth. My second sight is an heirloom, a volume of sonnets passed down, a line of flight as if she is more image than intent, more midnight than syllable, the eye before the eye, the root beneath my poem. I am a remembrance and she is my Volta. An echo blooms, this echo is her hair parting into my hair. She is the fine dark strand across my memory. She glides like a reed, a silhouette of green across the great sea. Her poetry strikes through my window like a stone, breaking the skin memory of water. Thank you.